the exorcism of Clarita Villanueva. Clarita Villanueva, a 17-year-old Filipino girl, had known a life of tragedy. She did not remember her father. She did not know if he had died or deserted her mother. Her mother was a fortune teller by vocation. The girl was brought up watching her mother holding seances, communicating with the dead, and using clairvoyance to predict to you people what they could expect in the future. Her mother took money from people for her services and then laughed at behind the backs. To her, it was all just a game, a means of making life a little bit easier by duping unsuspecting and gullible people. When Clarita was 12 years old, her mother died. She did not have any immediate family to take her in or care for her. She turned into prostitution for survival. At 18, she moved to Manila with her boyfriend and found out that he was already married. So she began working as an exotic dancer. The big city was a hiding place, a center of money and vice for her business. But one morning at 2 a.m. on the streets of downtown Manila, Clarita was picked up by the police who suspected her of being a vagrant of homeless. The policemen called for a vehicle and Clarita was taken to the ancient Bilibid prison, used there as a city jail. Bilibid had been a prison for 300 years. It was built by the Spanish and used by the Americans, the Filipinos and the Japanese as a prison and a place for torment. Two days after Clarita was incarcerated, they struck the strangest phenomenon to ever hit Bilibid prison in its 300 years history. This young woman was beaten severely on her body by unseen and unknown alien entities. She claimed there were two of them, a huge monster-like spirit and a smaller one. They had sunk their fangs and teeth deep into her flesh. They would bite her neck, back, leg and arms simultaneously. Blood flowed mostly underneath her skin from the bites. The 18-year-old girl screamed in horror and fainted. The guards and medic heard the commotion and came running into the woman's division of the prison. The other female inmates pointed to the withering, tormented girl on a coat. The girl was taken to the prison hospital for observation and treatment where all the doctors declared that they had never seen anything like it. The strange demonic bitings began to occur daily, baffling all who saw it. Dr. Mariano Lera, the chief medical examiner of the prison, appealed for help through the media and permitted many to view the strange phenomenon. Filipino, Chinese, and American doctors, university professors, and other professionals were called to analyze the situation. After three weeks of torment and torture, a radio reporter had come to Bilibid and taped a session while the doctors were violently struggling with Clarita. The reporter immediately released his story on the local station just after the 10 o'clock news. The news media soon caught wind of the occurrence and sent more reporters out to investigate. The incident was made to the front page of newspapers all over the world, Switzerland, France, Germany, England, Canada and even the United States. One doctor accused the girl of putting on an act just for publicity. Clarita gazed at the doctor and said, you will die. He didn't feel anything at the moment, but the following day, the doctor expired without even getting sick. He simply died. The chief jailer had confronted the girl. He had kicked her for something she had done wrong while rebelling against him. 
Clarita looked into the jailer's in cold, inhuman hate, and said, "You will die!" Within four days the man was dead and buried the second person to fall a victim to the curse. Dr. Lara and his medical staff were deeply concerned. They had a prisoner who was certainly not crazy, but who was vilely being attacked by unseen entities and being beaten deeply on all parts of her body by creatures no one could see. Who were the alien entities? The large one, Clarita said, was a monster in size. He was black and very hairy. He had fangs that came down on each side of his mouth, plus a set of butt kick all the way round. The doctor verified her description by the teeth mark all over her body, butt teeth solid, all the way around the bite, rather than sharp teeth at the front. The smaller entity was almost like a dwarf. He would climb onto his body and bite her upper torso. Both of the spirits liked to bite her where there was a lot of flesh, like at the back. her leg and also her neck. Dr. Lara and his staff sent out word globally, come and help us, please help us. In the end, hopelessness urged them to finally resort to exorcism. Reverend Lester Samuel heeded the call. Because I was a foreigner in the Philippines, I went to the mayor's office and asked for permission to see Clarita. He granted me his permission but warned me that several people had been injured by the girl and that two had been cursed and were dead. I went with the understanding that I would not sue the government if I was hurt and that I would not complain if mistreated. When I arrived to the prison, the head doctor of six physicians, Dr. Lara, was skeptical of this foreign minister, but he finally permitted me to see the girl. Clarita was brought in into a special room where the reverend was waiting with a large group of newspaper reporters, foreign members of press, university professors and medical doctors who were invited by Dr. Lara. As Clarita was being led into the room, she looked at them and said nothing. But when she saw Reverend Sumrall, she screamed violently, I hate you. This was the beginning of confrontation. There was raging battle with the girl, bless missing, God of the Father, God of the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Her eyes were burning coals of fire and full of hate. I commanded the evil spirit to lose her. After a three-day confrontation with the devil in her, the miracle of God came upon her. She relaxed and smiled, saying, He's gone, indicating that the thing went out the window.